So we did now a search of keywords, basic keywords. And this seemed to be smart enough to show me local businesses. Uh, a few years ago, it would, it would not be unusual if I searched for web design, I got results from New York, or Illinois, or Cambodia. But now it knows, it seems to know, location. And that's because there's a lot of location-aware ability on our web browsers and search engine computers and mobile devices especially that ties into all of this. So nowadays, uh, people are using their mobile devices much more to do search. But if you think about perhaps how you do search, you're, you're probably already engaged in the, key, in the long tail keyword strategy. Let me, let me draw something here to help explain what that means. So, okay, so I've got uh, a simple XY um, chart uh, on the X axis from left to right. We can plot frequency. Type it. Frequency. And then vertically, we have keyword. On the y axis. And then we have an actual chart that would look something like this if my hand is steady. All right, so frequency and keyword. <clears throat> I'm sorry, it's getting, uh, I think I need, I'm having low blood sugar. I have it backwards, sorry about that. It's going to be keyword at the bottom. Right, keyword at the bottom. Yes, sorry, keyword at the bottom, frequency on the left. It'll make sense in a moment. Keyword. at the bottom, and frequency at the left. There are some keywords that are going to be used very frequently. Web design is going to be used a lot. And therefore, the result page is going to give me 1.6 billion results. As I get further out here and more specific, web design in San Diego. Um, medical web design companies in Chula Vista, or um, you know, affordable medical web design companies uh, in East Lake. As I get more specific keywords, the frequency is smaller, therefore less competition using those keywords. So I'm never going to be found to optimize my site as web design. I'm going to be targeting the long tail. So imagine there's a cow over here, and here's its tail. The long tail. So specific keywords, natural language keywords, because uh, you're probably already engaging in doing searching like affordable Italian restaurants near me, or uh, new Italian food restaurants in Chula Vista or whatever way you're searching for the information you're looking for because you perhaps subconsciously or consciously know you're not going to get very good results if you're so general. So when you're specific, you have less choices and therefore you, could, you as a consumer could find what you're looking for easier and you as the company, as the brand, then also have less competition when you're more specific when you're targeting the long tail keywords. So, for example, on a mobile device, every major mobile device nowadays has some sort of voice assistant. 
On the iPhone, it's Siri. On Google, it's Google Now. And then on Windows Phone, it's Cortana. So you should be able to do something like, what's a good Italian food restaurant nearby? There are 10 Italian restaurants that have good reviews. And so it gives me a bunch of restaurants. It gives me their ratings. It gives me their distance, 0 0.6 miles away, 0 0.7 miles away. Restaurante Caz has four out of five stars out of 93 reviews. Uh, it gave me Little Sam's Pizza, four out of five reviews of a, with 99 reviews. It gave me Maggie's Cafe, four and a half stars out of five reviews, 132 Yelp reviews. The point is, I, I asked it a real kind of question, a natural language question. Your phone can probably do this right now. Maybe you've never done it, but millions of other people are doing it and going to do it. Mm -hmm. I just did a long tail keyword search. I didn't type in restaurants. That's going to give me McDonald's, and that's going to give me other such restaurants. Uh, even if I go with Italian restaurants, that's still probably going to give me Olive Garden. No offense if you like it, but I want something authentic like... Uh, I don't know, Maggie's Cafe or Manja Manja or Cucina Basilico or something. Because it gave me also Yelp reviews. So all of that stuff is being tied together. Not just the website itself, but these Yelp reviews based on distance. Because this knows where I'm at. It has location awareness. So this is what we're going to be focusing on this class. The long tail keywords. The moving target of SEO was a few years ago you wanted to figure out your keywords and apply them all over your site, like on the address. Nowadays, you don't need to stuff keywords. Keyword stuffing, actually, nowadays is going to be detrimental. The search engines will tell us do's and don'ts. And in the old days, a do was use your keywords everywhere. Now, that's not a do anymore, because if you know that technique, then eventually so do the spammers and the hackers and the and the crackers and the scammers and all of those kinds of companies, the fly-by-night organizations, the cheap Canadian meds dot coms of the world. Um, those kinds of websites are gonna then abuse those things. And they're gonna put every keyword, even if it's not relevant. And in the old days, then maybe they would have been higher than you, even though they're not relevant, just because they abused the system. So the search engines say, okay, here's the new system, long tail keywords, but also content. Let me put this here, nice big letters. Content is also the big concept of modern SEO. What's on your website? Are you blogging? How long ago did you blog? Are you on social media? Um, if your website is really only a business card and it has your hours of operation and such, that's not as useful to your customers as also being on Twitter to show that today you've got a sale on whatever or that there's a coupon on something. So being active, having an active website or an online presence and sharing content or providing content content to your users is important now, more than just the keywords. The, uh, the search engines will tell us, uh, optimize for people, not for search engines. Create content, create a nice looking website, a mobile friendly website, use Twitter to reach people. And that in turn will make us, the search engines, happy and put you in front of more people. If you're just going to mechanically put keywords like amazing web design san diego.com you're not really doing uh, the right way anymore if I'm victor.com and I'm also putting out web design content on my website blog and I'm putting web design content on my Twitter and I've got reviews about my web design on Yelp it doesn't matter that I don't have those keywords on my address like what, what which was so important a few years ago if someone took your website with those keywords, you, 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 you would be kicking yourself because you didn't claim the name. But now you don't need that website with those exact keywords anymore because it's all about your content and the long tail of it all. Yes? Now, like you said, it's pulling from your Twitter and everything. <coughs> you don't have a lot of followers. Does that matter? Or it, are they just putting it that you just posted something? 
No, it is all tied together. So if if you're putting out a message that message that no one's listening to, that's negative to some degree. Uh, so that's a whole ball of wax too. That's why there's a class. Um, how to use Twitter, but how to get followers too, how to get an audience. So yes, the best is that you've got a lot of followers and you use Twitter on a regular basis and you blog and people reshare your stuff. That's the best. That's how the search engines see all of these different signals to show that you know what you're doing, your website is relevant, and they'll rank you higher than your competitors. That's the most ideal. It takes the most time and effort, of course. So that's the long tail keyword strategy. Let's apply that right now. If we do one more search, go back to the search engines, and now we'll search for a more complete keyword, a more detailed keyword, uh, an actual perhaps full sentence, a natural language search uh, about your company or what you want to be found on. So perhaps I want. Um, Authentic, <coughs> authentic Italian restaurants in Chula Vista. So I'm going to do a search in both. A longer phrase. Maybe at the moment you don't know what your longer phrase is. We'll talk about that. But uh, authentic Italian food in Chula Vista. So Italian food or Italian restaurant is probably not going to give me really what I'm looking for. Um, here I misspelled it on, on accident, but didn't matter because this, these searches are getting smarter. And what I'm going to show here <coughs> is on both of these searches, uh, one of my company's clients shows up. Uh, here on Google, in my case the number one result with a nice picture and reviews and everything, is uh, one of my clients, Italianissimo Trattoria. Hard to spell, hard to remember. Uh, the website's also got a long name and such, but I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't search for the name of the company. I searched for something that someone would be looking for, specifically authentic Italian food, because maybe you don't think Olive Garden is, is authentic. I want something authentic. Maybe I could go very even deeper and say, you know, auth uh, authentic uh, Sicilian dishes, you know, much more specific. But anyway, this this client here, they're they're number one. They've got this nice little call out. These are reviews coming over from uh, from Yelp, I believe. Third Avenue, a photo, the stars. Uh, there's a competitor right here, actually, literally right down the street. Second place, 4.3 stars, 4.4 stars. Uh, let's see what other results. Oh, these are coming from, from Zagat. Uh, then Yelp over here. Okay, yeah, these are coming from Zagat. And then these, the results right here. Number one result is, is, is my client. Notice, though, it is the Yelp result. Who cares? It's the client uh, ranked highly. It doesn't have to be your website all the time that ranks as number one. Any of your online presences that ultimately get you, uh, get you a conversion is a win. And we'll talk in detail, but a conversion is basically, one kind of conversion is a person that was not a client and now has been converted to a client. So any person that's searching and finds any of these results, then, is, then eventually eats at the restaurant, that was a conversion. Or I can define a conversion as simply visiting my website. Converted someone from someone never visiting my website to someone that has visited my website. It's a conversion. Uh, it's a little bit of jargon there. But on Yelp, four and a half stars, 235 reviews, 4.5 price range, and then this blurb right there. Um, so the client's website 
did a, uh, appear no even though even the website doesn't appear there this still takes you to you know the Google profile of the site uh, and that's fine because then that links to the website and then the first result after that spot is a Yelp um, review which then that also takes you to the website this is another reason why you're also going to claim your Google your Yelp profile and such so that you can then funnel people to your website especially if you're selling something from your website well that's what you're gonna sell from your website and you want to funnel them to your website from whatever other source they come from you can't sell anything right now on Twitter you can't sell anything on Pinterest eventually you will uh, right now you can buy stuff via tweet from Amazon but we're not as big as Amazon we are probably gonna com complete our big conversion goal on our website which is to have someone book a table order now request a quote whatever goal you want people to complete that's your conversion goal you can have more than one but the conversion goal the big one for this client is to get people to come to the restaurant and buy the pasta or whatever they're not gonna buy a pasta on a website but on the website perhaps they can book a table call up for a reservation see the menu and then eventually sit down and and, and order their meal Another result here is best Italian food, Chula Vista, again from Yelp. This is going to give you a bunch of other results. And as I look there again, that client is number one. Number two is the guys down the street. Number three is the ones on the other street. Uh, the guys over there. And so then the actual website doesn't appear until like almost halfway through the results. And of course, it's going to be hard to remember, hard to spell, but it's going to be easy to remember authentic Italian restaurants. And this client appears in many of, many of the results. There's the TripAdvisor. You may have never heard of TripAdvisor, but this has 70 reviews. It's like Yelp for travelers that are coming to a new location. This has perfect five stars, 70 reviews. And then here's a blog post from there about the top 10 best Chula Vista restaurants. We'll talk about this as well. This is an important aspect of things. Um, you know, reviews, recommendations from other websites. I want that. I want prominent foodies to be reviewing this client and driving their traffic to my client's site. We'll talk about that. Those are the results over on uh, Google and in in Yelp and Bing. Look at this completely different. There's this big call out section, featured section, and it's really nice. I want to be on that. We'll see how to do that. But there's the client again, and then there's the star ratings and the price ratings and such. And this authority, just by looking at this call out here. And I've already told you which is my client, but if you didn't know that, look, based on all of this, which would you be most apt to visit? Pizza again, this one that doesn't even have any of the food, well that looks nice, and that looks nice, and that looks nice. Okay, I've got a few contenders. No ratings, no ratings, some ratings here, good ratings, good rating, but I don't want pizza today. Not as good rating, not as good rating. So all of these pieces of information then are informing you to make your ultimate decision. So again, it's not just what you do on your website, it's what else are you doing on your website? SEM, the search engine marketing. And this stuff is coming from Yelp. So if you're not investing some time and effort in Yelp, you could be, you know, you could have the chance, but they're probably going to blow the chance. No ratings, no pictures of food, probably not as many clicks, even though they're number two compared to the client number three, but that's a photo that our company shot um, and it's up there and maybe it looks a little bit better than that cell phone photo right there tastier and maybe it looks a little bit better than that mass of food that's there that's kind of hard to tell what is that anyway so if you've got a website have you invested in good photos <coughs> have you got written good copy or text for your website many factors that we'll be talking about these three weeks so it's not just about coming to a class and learning about keywords and that sort of thing. It's so many 
things in this ball of wax. Yes? There are any restrictions about using stock images on your review sites? <clears throat> well, the review sites uh, are, um, you know, there's two aspects to it. The photos that the people take, and then the photos that you put up there for your best foot forward. Since it's your best foot forward, I would not recommend to be using stock images, because then your p picture of pizza will look just like everyone else's picture of pizza. So you could use stock images, because legally you could. But I wouldn't, because then they don't really represent your particular brand. <laughs> and maybe you have a brand or a company that, yes, is not so specific that it needs its own photography, but that also gives you an air of professionalism and authority. If all of your content is about you, you know, it may never happen. Most likely it will. If you are using stock images, that'll show up on someone else's site. And then that won't look so good for your site. And uh, using your own original content goes toward building authority, which is another important aspect of the search engine signals. Uh, is your website authoritative? Is it putting out content that is the best about that search term? Is that an authority? Uh, so in this particular case, the competitor is number one compared to our client, but a lot of people are probably going to go directly to that because of the pretty pictures. And even it's not number one, it's on the first page of results out of how many? Like 20 million? Uh, the, uh, my client also then, there's their Yelp. Okay, so they've got two spots on page one compared to one spot so far from the competitor. Yeah, they're number one, but then over here they're, they're number two, and then they're over here showing their amazing ratings and reviews. It's Ciao Italiano. Just by looking at the star ratings, which is better? Eleven reviews. They're on page one, sure, but it's not just being on page one. It's all of these factors. Yes? So for the, for the Yelp reviews, you open that one page and the uh, restaurant you're interested in was high up on the list. Is that based on uh, favorable reviews or does the SEO optimization affect into that? Yelp is supposed to be that the, that the results that appear in their ranking are because of people's ratings, not really the SEO. It's people that that have a good experience and, and then take the time to write that good review, four stars, three stars, five stars. And conversely, the ranking drops when people go in and write those negative reviews and one stars and all of that. Um, so your rankings on Yelp really are supposed to be very meritocratic in that it is what you've earned from people's reviews will get you higher on those rankings in Yelp. It's supposed, supposed to be. And it's pretty correct. Uh, because they, Yelp does have that problem, but really nowadays not as bad as before that there would be, uh, you know, all of these fake spam bots creating fake perfect five-star reviews. They do have to crack down on that because their business model is to give you the best results from, from their algorithm. And if it's being overrun by spam bots and it has no trust, then what good is their, is their product? So they, it does work because I see in the clients that I, that I work with that have a Yelp profile, I see when someone goes in and gives a one-star review, that then gets discounted because that person only has one review. They created the Yelp account specifically to trash them. So Yelp just removes that review. But if I'm a Yelper that I've got experience in Yelp for three years, one year, and I'm rating a lot of sites, then Yelp will take me into better account. Not just the one angry person that created the account to trash you. So it's a whole big uh, deal with Yelp as well. So that's how you stop your competition from trashing you. Well, Yelp is, is trying to do that for you already. Yeah. They're, they're filtering out the, 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 the reviews that are not as relevant. Yes? Do you ever take on the clients that have low Yelp reviews? And is there an ethical or is it illegal to give out something to give people to rank, uh, give you rankings on Yelp? Uh, my, my company, we have not uh, really dealt with any ones that have started with bad reviews. Oftentimes, we start with those that are starting off so they don't have reviews really uh, but as for ethical for you know good reviews for for something um, 
it is a fine line because one of the things you want to do is you're going to be a business, you get a bad review, you're going to monitor it. What you're going to do is you're going to reply to them. You can reply to them in on Yelp in private or public. The best is to reply in public and you know say, okay, we're sorry you had that bad experience. Our server was having a bad day. We're sorry she spilled the water all over you. Come back to give us another chance and we'll see that our restaurant really is a good one. Uh, we're not specifically saying come in and we'll give you 10% off. We're saying give us another chance. We understand your pain. Let's fix it. Maybe they'll take you up on it and they come back and change that one star to three stars, four stars, whatever. But really it's not good practice. Not that it's illegal, but it's not good practice for you to then privately send them a message. If you give us a five star, we'll give you three free hamburgers. What if you have a sign in your restaurant that says, we'll give you 10% off if you give us five star review on here? There's nothing illegal about that either, ethically wise. That's not going to last too long because most likely then that will that will get out. Someone will tweet that and then that'll start a big brouhaha and then maybe Yelp will, you know, drop the hammer because, oh, you're paying for, you're bribing for good reviews. So I, I would really be, in, I would not be engaging on that blatantly. I would really be using Yelp to try to put out the fires that some of the negative reviews are, are starting but in an open way instead of asking for the good reviews. Yes? I'm just going to tag on to um, his question or an answer to that. My friend, she's a big Yelper. She's a foodie who will eat. Uh -huh. And she says that um, big Yelpers, they look out for that stuff. And if you offer something for a good Yelp review, they'll be all over you on that. Mm -hmm. And they'll record it. And then Yelp will take down your reviews. And it's just not a good thing to do because Yelpers want yeah, because Yelp is a company that's trying to put out a product about good reviews, but it's still powered by people. And so the people themselves, you know, they take pride. I'm an, I've got the Elite 2014 badge, so I'm going to use Yelp the best way that I can, positively, because they get something out of it, good feelings or whatever. And um, yeah, they, uh, the Elite ones, they could definitely do that, and it just wouldn't help you in the long term. You want to use Yelp as a, as a positive tool as best as possible and not try to game it. Because maybe a few years ago you could. And there's still some gaming going on with it, but really not like there was before. It's much more legitimate. Look at their stock price. There was a few hundred dollars per share because they are number one in the space and they, they want, to, want to do it right. Yes? So this is really for, I mean, it's ideal for a local, but if but if you're like, say you want your web developer and you want a California to be here, you know, niche, mm -hmm. this isn't going to be, this isn't going to help you? Is Yelp going to help you at all? <clears throat> it's still going to help because um, Yelp is, um, is, is nationwide, it's global, and it's becoming so synonymous with a trusted source of reviews. So even if you're not, uh, even if you're target is statewide, it's still very helpful to have a presence here so that people can have the sounding board to rate you positively and a place for you to deal with the negative. You don't want people to just be putting a negative review of, of you on their personal Facebook because you have no control over that. You, you don't have any recourse really. But if they're writing a negative on your Yelp account, like I'm saying, you can contact them privately or publicly even better and try to talk about how you'll improve their next experience. So it is useful even if you're not completely local. It's just grown that much. It was originally just for local and now it's really grown to review everything. And it does behoove you to have at least claimed your profile so that you can deal with this, for example, uh, Villa Fresh Italian Kitchen, one and a half stars. They should be on top of that and trying to uh, improve that. So what we're going to be talking about then is dealing is uh, it's developing our long tail keyword strategy. Uh, and right now I had an example of something to show you. Maybe you don't quite know what are people searching for? What are my long tail keywords? So uh, we're going to have an activity here where I'm going to give you um, a document 
uh, for you to fill out. This is a version of one that we give out to a client because my company, what we do before we take on any, any client, we have a variety of packages, of course. Do you only want a website? Great, but that's only going to take you so far. You also should have some social media. So before we do anything of a website or on social media, we need to know as much as we can about the client. Obviously, the client knows everything about it. They live and breathe their business. We are coming in. We don't know as much of the business as we'd like to, but we're going to get educated about the business so that we can represent the business as best as possible on their website, on their Twitter, on Yelp, all of that. So I'm going to give you this document that we give the clients. Uh, I'll remind you where the network folder is in just a moment if you forgot, but let me put in a new document in there. So if you go to the desktop of our computer, open up computer, you will see the network location drive, drive Z for Zebra, double click the classroom data drive Z. <coughs> Scroll down to find my folder which is Campos <coughs> SEO, C-A-M-P-O-S. Mm -hmm. There, Campus SEO, open that. I had the syllabus there earlier. And now what you want to do is drag a copy. Don't just double click it. Drag a copy to your desktop or your flash drive, your USB drive. Copy that over, and then we'll open it, and we'll take a look at what's in that. And of course, if you're having trouble finding it, raise your hand, and I'll, and I'll help you out. But you want to get a copy of that. You don't want to really print this because you want to fill this out. I'm giving it to you as a Word document so that you can easily fill it out. This is not homework. I'm not saying fill this out and then turn it into me or, or whatever. I can look at it if you want, but this is more for you. Th this class, I forgot to say earlier, there is no final exam, there are no homeworks or grades or anything like that. You get out of this class and most of my classes, what you put into it, what you learn. There's no homework in any of my classes, but I'm always happy to help as best as I can during the lab time for your particular needs. Did everyone get the document open? This is the company profile. Um, clients are often surprised. They approach us for a website. How much does it cost and all of that. And after we, we talk about it, uh, we really tell them there's, there's more to it than just a website. Because, yes, we can, we can create an amazing looking website for you, but do you know what you're going to have in your About Us page? Are you going to have, what's your contact page going to look like? And then they never thought about that. So this is something to educate us about the client and also for the client to know about themselves more. So this is a company profile. Uh, there's these different sections. So you now think about this as yourself like that. We're interviewing you and you have to fill this out. I'm not saying right now, but um, you need to, we would need to know the company name and it's not just about that. What is the company name? Why did you choose the name? Does it have a special meaning or a story? For example, my web design company will be vic.co, pronounced vic.co, and it comes from my name. So your company name goes there. Better yet, if you write a little bit about why did you choose that name, that and other things will inform what your About Us page is about. If your website doesn't have an About Us page, that could be a detriment because the search engines will analyze every page of your site. And if you have an About Us page with your company information and foundation and what your values and all of that stuff is, then when someone searches for you know sustainable farm to table web designers or whatever and that's part of your about us page that could be a reason why you show up above your competitor because your content is out there for the search engines to see tagline think of one sentence that helps people understand what your company is about think of some famous taglines why do they stick your tagline could also be a concise statement about your company if its name is not immediately understandable. Uh, so, you know, if you've got an esoteric kind of name like PMD Interactive, what are they about? Video games? Um, then a tagline is very important. 
a great company for your great website, for example. If you've got a company that's like Victor's Bakery, obviously I can tell that it's a bakery. But the tagline might be something like East Lake's premier family-owned bakery. You know, one sentence that explains what the business is. Very important if your name on its own doesn't make sense to people. Also important if the name makes sense, but also for the search engines, but for, for people to know what your website is about. Just a simple sentence. Think of all of the famous taglines and catchphrases. I'm loving it. It's in the game. Just do it. All of these, all of these taglines for these different companies. And yes, this is an art and a science to create the perfect tagline. I'm not saying you have to think of one right now. You think about it, run it by your your interested parties, and, and develop it. Uh, be careful, of course, because if everyone has an has the ability to give an opinion on something, everyone will give an opinion. Who are the who are the decision makers? Uh, you know, we just dealt with someone recently uh, yesterday that uh, we we went to their business. This is a this is a bar. They've been open one one month and they don't have that much um, clientele yet so they want us to do their social media and such we talked to them and he was very excited he was ready to write a check and everything really like what we wanted to do and he said okay now let me just talk to my associate and we'll get back to you okay so you're introducing more cooks to the kitchen we'll see how the souffle turns out so yes get in, get input and such but perhaps input from the ones that can make decisions not just show it to your spouse because they're your spouse Show it to the person that really is going to be maybe footing the bill, making decisions, that sort of thing. You're going to write a little bit about us, about the company. Maybe you, maybe this is your website that you're trying to show your artwork and, and do murals and such. Well, about <coughs> yourself. Write a paragraph about your company, who founded it. What is it about? When did you get the idea for it? Where was it founded? Why are you in business? And how will you make the company a success? These answers will help fill out your biography on various sites. Because if you go over to Twitter, it asks you for a little bio. There's a bio in Facebook and Google Plus and all of that. So this helps inform what you're going to write in those spots. And if you notice, my questions here are the classic who, what, why, when, why, how, those classic journalism questions. You don't have to answer them all, but I've chosen these ones because they could be the most useful so that um, your presence makes sense to people online and is found by the search engines. Mission statement. Write something that lets potential customers know what's in it for them. Why would they hire you? For example, Vic.co exists to bring the most beautiful web design to the most discerning clients in Southern California. Our designs will make everyone take notice. So here, I've, that's pretty dense right there in terms to reach my target audience. Okay, web design, beautiful web design for discerning clients in Southern California. There's our target. And so this is a mission statement that says what our company is about, but also who is it for? why would people want to hire us and, and this is something to take a little side note uh, about why this question of why let me draw a little picture here So I got three circles. The outer circle, this red circle, we would call what? The inner circle, or the second circle, we would call how? Is that readable? 
<coughs> how. And then the innermost circle we would call y. For any kind of company, we can have all three questions. So let's say I may, I'm this web design company, Vic.co. The what of it is that we are a web design company. You almost have to then say, so what? So is everyone else. So the, the what is the most outer level. It's what you do, what your company does. Inside of that is how. How does your company provide web design? Well, we uh, know how to use WordPress, and we have e-commerce experience, and we've worked with other clients. How are we going to create a great website for you? And that's the second level. The third level is the most important one, but the hardest one. Why would a, a client then hire you? Because I can find a bunch of other companies that can provide web design, and I can find a bunch of other companies that can do it through WordPress and have e-commerce experience and so forth. Why would I hire you specifically? The why of it all is what sort of uniqueness do you offer the particular client in question? So uh, the why I would be hired is because we are a company that believes in web design. We want to work with restaurants specifically. We want them to succeed. Maybe even for the fact that you're a small business, we're a small business, we're in San Diego, we believe in San Diego, we set up our company here just like you. We want to help the San Diego economy. Uh, you're a small business, we're a small business. This is more of the personal touch. Why would a particular company be hired by a particular client? And that, again, is the hardest one to answer. Because when our company then is trying to get a client, we have to sell the why to them also. We have to understand about their company, maybe do some research, talk to the people, the president or whoever, figure out their company and their uh, reason, their mission statement and such. And how does that align? How does our client and our, I mean, our company and our values and such align with their values and their reason for why they have a company as well? So uh, this concept comes from uh, a book and an author. I always forget his first name, but his last name is Sinek. Does anyone know that name? Sometimes people know it in, in a class. Um, oh, Simon Sinek. That's his name. Um, he's got a book. Um, again, I'm bugging on the name. It's late. Uh, I think it's called um, The Power of Why... We can look it up, obviously. But uh, he's got a book ab about that, a whole book that, that gives examples about the Wright brothers, Steve Jobs, um, you know, Starbucks, all of these companies um, and famous people. Uh, one of the reasons they were successful is because of the why. Why are they relevant? Why is their product useful? Why do they resonate with people? Why are they so rich? Uh, because... The iPhone was not the first smartphone. Nokia made a bunch of good smartphones before that. Um, the, the how is how would that smartphone maybe be useful to you, but then the why, love them or hate them, Apple is one of the most profitable companies in the history of humanity. Sounds like hyperbole, but look at their stock price and look at their um, balance sheets and all of that. And look at their commercials. On their commercials, uh, Apple commercials, they've got happy people, they've got families, they've got uh, friends living life, experiencing it, sharing it because of their iPhone. They are having grandma talk to grandson across the nation because of FaceTime, because of their product. They are creating these human connections, the why of it. They're putting the people forefront of the of the commercials, of their advertising. Except for the Apple Watch, if you if you pay attention. Uh, but Apple does a really good job of explaining the why you want this iPhone. And even if you're never going to touch an iPhone and you love your Samsung, probably 
the commercial or the ad or whatever also spoke to you in some way about why I want that product. Because the how and the what anyone can do. The why is the unique selling proposition about why you are better than the competition or why your product should be the perfect product for your client. So this golden circle here which you can look up in more detail. This is this is hard, but this handout that I'm giving is taking you toward that to start to think about these things. Mission statement, uh, the, the the how, what, when, where, and how, and why of all of that. Why would they hire you? Vic Co exists to bring the most beautiful web design to the most discerning clients in Southern California. Our designs will make everyone take notice. I want that as a client. I want my website to be noticed, to stand out compared to the other realtors. And my uh, territory is Southern California, just like you guys. You're in Southern California. I'm not just hiring someone out of New York that doesn't understand Southern California. And then these, uh, these words, these adjectives, of course, depending on your company and niche, you want to tap into this emotional aspect of things. Apple is also successful because they've got this whole concept of, uh, you know, this reality distortion field about beautiful this and amazing that and life-changing this and that. And some of the other companies try to do that because they see that it works for them. They'll try it, maybe put their spin on it, and it might work for them. That's why Samsung then is also a very big profitable company. And so maybe you came to this class and thought, okay, we're just going to learn about keywords in Google Analytics. It's a big ball of wax. Next, values. What are some keywords that your company believes in? For example, orderliness, teamwork, discipline, etc. The point of knowing this and defining this and articulating it, this is because this is what your target audience would be caring about. If you're, um, you know, if you're some sort of restaurant and you're articulating that you're all about farm to table and so are and that's what also your clientele cares about you'll be more apt to bring in that clientele if you can articulate on your website on Twitter on Facebook on Pinterest on snapchat Instagram whatever whatever wherever your audience is at if you're articulating these values that they also hold then they could then potentially um, accomplish the conversion goal that you're setting them out to do. Use that coupon, visit our store, subscribe to our newsletter, donate to our cause. If you follow that link, you'll get a bunch of keywords that you can look at. But in this, this one and the next one, we're, we're thinking about personification of our company. Uh, thinking of our company just not just as a company, uh, but as an entity that is going to connect with uh, potential uh, clients, or customers. So further along those lines, personality. Think of your company as a person. How would she, uh, she or he communicate? How would he or she behave? For example, Vic.co's communication is spontaneous and friendly. Vic.co is happy to talk to new clients and share the latest in web design. So what sort of personality might your company have? Is it stoic and matter-of-fact? Is it um, you know, friendly and bubbly? Is it um, uh, an eager <coughs> kind of company? Is it reserved, etc.? Um, what kind of personality might it have? Because again, that's going to dictate what you're going to put out on social media. If your company is a, uh, is a CPA, you're not going to want to have slang and all of that on your Twitter. It's not going to give me very much confidence that you're trying to keep up with <coughs> slang that young people are, tr are keeping up with when you're ha handling my financial portfolio. But if you are uh, a party rental company, you're not going to be using you know proper English and punctuation and all of that and being very um, proper. So you need to know what kind of communication your company will be engaged in to reach that target audience. And then just some fundamentals here. List the company address, 
website, email contact address, and any social media profiles that already exist. You may also list social media profiles you would like to set up in the future. So here you would type in your address for your website. Um, do you have also a physical address, maybe a warehouse, maybe a phone number, fax number? What's the email address people can contact you at? And we're as I'm asking for all of these things right here because that also um, is used to populate. Remember when we got results over here that have an address and a phone number and all of that? If you have all of that information and plug it into the sites and profiles, then um, that could look well for you when you get searched. And also, this creates some more of that authority that I've been talking about. If you and your competitor both created a great looking website a year ago, but yours has a phone number to call for complaints or compliments, and a, an address that someone can actually visit and your competitor doesn't, Google will say, well, this one is more authoritative. They are more open to communication with their customers. Let's rank them higher than the competitor, which is just a, a business website, a business card website that doesn't have any real communication uh, with their clients. So filling this in will start to get you thinking about the long tail keyword. I have one more activity. We'll take a break very soon, but this is one of the things that my company does with a potential new client so that we can understand them and do a good job for them. I give this to you uh, for free out here for you to think about and define your particular company and start thinking about target audience. I'll have another handout that focuses on that. But to, to plan these things or start to think about them so that you have a stronger online presence because there's SEO and there's SEM and this is part of the SEM stuff and the SEO stuff. But it's, it's, it's uh, a lot to, to, to work with. Any general questions on this sh sheet? Again, you can print it out if you like, but I gave it to you as a Word document so you can already go in and, and fill it in. Let's take our last break. When we come back, I'll give you one more handout. This will be, again, uh, focusing on the long tail keywords more concretely. Uh, we'll do a short break this time, just five minutes. Uh, so it's 8.24. We'll be back at 8.30. When we come back, uh, we'll, we'll keep talking. <clears throat>